Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to video number 10 in the how to program in C-Sharp course. So in today's video we're going to take a look at classes. And uh, until now we've pretty much only used one class and that was our main class. And we've only used it to kind of group together our code. But what we're going to be doing now is we are going to look at how classes can be used to kind of build our own sets of data that can then be distributed uh, throughout our application and uh, we can really take a look at how they can improve the way that we write code and allow us to write whole new uh, kinds of software. So that was a very vague <laughs> kind of explanation uh, but um, classes are really really useful for a bunch of things uh, and you you don't have to get re very far in programming before you use them pretty much all the time. So before we get started I just quickly want to mention that if you have any questions go to forum.brackies.com and also and I feel like I haven't mentioned this for quite a while we do indeed have a Facebook page so if you go to facebook.com slash brackies uh, you can check it out here and I do post quite a few things that doesn't uh, appear on YouTube so if you want to follow along on the software I'm writing or updates like this by the way thank you so much for helping me reach 100,000 subscribers you are incredibly awesome and uh, devoted followers and uh, uh, this couldn't be done without you and uh, uh, yeah, really just check it out. We also, uh, I'm also on Twitter, um, but um, Facebook is the place to be. Cool. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to open up Xamarin Studio as always. And uh, you can see I've left a comment here that says classes. So the first thing we're going to look at is creating a class. So just like we have created a class here, we're going to make another one just above that. Make sure it's still inside uh, the same namespace though. And uh, we're going to do that by typing class, then the name of the class. And um, kind of to give you a, a, an understanding of what a class is, I'm going to call this one animal. Animal is a pretty uh, general term. Uh, there exists many kinds of animals and animals have different properties. And it's basically those kind of things that we try to explain using a class. So inside a class we then give it some properties and, and that's of course done through variables. So the first uh, kind of property we could give it uh, could be a uh, name. So we could make a string name and uh, we can default this to maybe spotty. We could then also give it a uh, an age int age equals and let's say that this one is six years old and uh, then maybe just to get the float in there also we could uh, do a happiness amount uh, that uh, ranges from zero to one and we could set that equal to 0 0.5 uh, by default. So when we are writing things like this uh, it's very important that we start to talk about what is called uh, access modifiers. And basically what access modifiers do uh, is they describe from, uh, from where and how uh, a piece of data or a variable can be accessed. So now that we are juggling multiple classes, it's very important that we know what this does. You have noticed that sometimes, when, or until now when we've written a method, we've made sure to make it a public static void where public and static are modifiers. And basically, we have three types of modifiers. So we have private, or actually we have quite a few more, but these are the ones that we are going to be using for now. We have private, public, and static. Private means that they, the data can only be accessed from inside the same class. Public means that we can access the data from other class classes if we just reference uh, the class. And static means that it's not bound to an instance of the class, but it's shared by all of the instances. So if this is kind of confusing to you, I totally get it, but 
I will make sure to demonstrate what this means. So right now we've just written, written the data type, then the name of the variable. When we do this without including any modifier at all, it defaults to private. So this is the exact same uh, as uh, just writing string. So if we put a private here in front of each data type and then tries uh, and then try to access um, the uh, animal class for this value, it's not going to work. Instead, what we'll have to do uh, is, is pu put public here because right now we can only access it from within. So if we have a, uh, a, an, a method called void and we uh, call this just test, then from in here, we'll be able to access name just fine. You can see it pops up there and we can just maybe write out the name here and that's gonna work just fine. But if we want to access it from our main method, uh, then we are gonna have to put public here instead. So we're gonna do that for all three variables. Then next up, I just quickly want to talk about how you can instantiate a class. So now we kind of have this idea of an, an animal that has these properties that can be changed. So how do we create an animal? Well, basically like any other var uh, variable with a data type. So down here we could go animal. We're going to be creating an animal just like we go int and float or string. We now go animal and we can call this maybe dog and set it equal to a new animal. And this is the syntax for doing that. Then we can write out dog.name and you can see here that this creates a new animal and writes out the name Spotty. What we can also do is change uh, things in this animal uh, class. So if we go back here, we can access values in a class by just using the dot. So we can say dog.name name should now be equal to, um, I don't know, <laughs> test. And uh, then we can write out the dark.name again. And you can see it changes from spuddy to test. Awesome. So that's how you access and change uh, values in a class. The next thing that we can do with a class is we can have what is called class methods. So we can actually have functions or methods inside of this class that do different things with the data. For example, we could have a uh, method called void that prints out all the information we have about the animal. So we're just going to call this print and it, it's, it's going to take no arguments. And uh, in here, we are simply going to write out the uh, animal uh, name. So we're going to do name plus and then name. Then we're going to do uh, age plus age. And finally, happiness plus happiness. So now when we call this method over here, it should print out all we know about the dog so far. But again, if we try and do dog.print, it's not there. And that's because just like any other variable, we have to give our method an access modifier. And here we call it public. By the way, access modifiers are also called protection level or even scope. So if you see that we type out dark.print uh, here, it's now there. But should we say remove this or change this to a private and then try and compile, it's going to say that animal.print is inaccessible due to its protection level. So there we go. So now when we hit play there, it's going to say names body age six and happiness of 0 0.5. Cool. Uh, next up, static variable. So we've taken a look at the public and static access modifier, but uh, or the public and private access modifier. But what does the static one do? So basically, all of these um, variables and methods are bound 
to this uh, to the instance of the animal that we're going to be creating. So here when we are making a dog animal, we are creating a new instance of the class animal. But we can also have variables and methods that are shared between all instances of the animal class. A good example of this would be if we wanted to keep score of how many animals we have. So for that, we can make a static, even a public static, so we can access it from outside. Uh, and we're going to make this of type int. And we can simply name this count and default it to zero. So what we can do now is basically uh, we can write dog dot, uh, you can see we, we could change this to public int count and then write dog dot count. But this wouldn't make sense because when we uh, say add one onto the dog and then add another animal, let's call this one cat, and then do cat dot count, uh, this should return zero. So let's try cat.count. So what we're doing here is we are making a dog instance. We are upping the count. Then we are creating a cat instance and we are printing the cat's count and they are going to be totally separate. You can see that's a zero. And if we print out dog.count, we get a one. So in order to eliminate this, we use public static int count. And then now we access it in a different way. We don't do dog.count. Instead, what we do is we type the name of the class, which is animal, dot count. And then we can directly access it this way. So we can say animal.count plus equals one. Or in this case, we're making two animals. So we're going to say plus equals two. And then we can write out dog. Um, uh, we could just write out, <laughs> not dark dot count, but animal dot count down here, and you'll see that it writes out two. So now it's shared. So that's super cool. And uh, but right now we have to uh, kind of increment it every time we are making a another animal. And what would be super cool was if it uh, did this itself. Another super cool thing that we might want to do is feed in a bunch of information for uh, about the animal when we first created instead of just having a default to a bunch of things and then having to go through and do dark that name equals something and and so on and so on so in order to do this uh, we use what is called a class constructor so let's take a look at creating a class constructor for our animal class so firstly we make some room then we type the name of the class, which is animal. And then we do a open and close parentheses, uh, followed by an open and close bracket. So basically, if you notice, this looks very much like a method call uh, or a method definition. But uh, and, and in reality, it's, it's quite a lot. Uh, a, a class constructor is very much like a method that is called uh, right the second that we uh, create a new instance of the class. Uh, so basically what we can use this for is if we just delete all of the uh, default values up here. So we'll make what is called a uh, default class constructor and uh, we'll just do name equals spotty uh, age equals uh, six and happiness uh, equals 0.5f. So this is going to function basically the same as uh, what we did up there. Um, so when we, we uh, kind of run this now, oops, uh, it's inaccessible. Now that's because we have to make this a public animal. Uh, it's going to run basically the same. But what we can do is we can now create another version of this uh, that uh, where we can input the, th uh, the, um, the values down here. And also what we can do is we can simply up the count right in here. So we can simply say count plus plus. So now what we do is we create an uh, animal called uh, dark and then we create an animal called cat 
and I want this to be a new animal and I want to give this some values. So uh, in order for us to make the, to do that, we simply make another class constructor. So I think it's time to create some comments here. So uh, we're going to pick these class constructors down here. You're going to say class methods. And up here, we're going to say class variables. So here we create another constructor called this public animal and uh, open and close parentheses and uh, some curly brackets. And in here, we uh, then simply give it some arguments, just like we've done with method methods. So we simply do a, a string, call this underscore name, a uh, an int, call this underscore age, and an uh, and uh, a float, uh, call this underscore happiness. So the underscore uh, is just there to uh, distinguish it from the public variables up here. It's a very common uh, naming convention when it comes to um, temporary variables uh, like this that are passed uh, through an argument. So uh, what we can do now is simply say that our name should equals underscore name, uh, our age equals underscore age, uh, our uh, happiness equals underscore happiness and count plus plus. So now we have two ways of creating an animal, the default way and the uh, with using the uh, kind of um, the uh, constructor that actually has some uh, parameters that we can pass to it. And uh, then we simply say we want a new animal. We want this to be uh, called um, Mr beans we want him to have an age of 10 and a happiness of uh, 0 0.8 and then we can of course take this cat here and we can uh, print out the information we have of it and then at last we can uh, maybe make a, a new line and uh, followed by um, the uh, current count of animals so a uh, num of animals and we're going to set that equal to animal dot count so when we hit play you can see whoops just to make this pretty i'm going to put in an empty line here too so we can see now that we have a a an animal named spotty age of six happiness of 0 0.5 another one called mr beans age of 10, happiness of 0 0.8, and the total number of animals that we have uh, is equal to 2. Cool, so that was a basic uh, kind of rundown of classes. Now you know everything you need to know to create 90% uh, of the classes that you are going to be writing. And this is so essential for uh, structuring your code, reusing code, and uh, really opening up the possibilities of kind of creating your own uh, pieces of data that you can then distribute. So um, that's super, super cool. And if you, you got this already, well done. If not, that's completely understandable. This can be uh, a lot of information and quite a bit of new syntax. But um, either way, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.